2018 Kawasaki Vulcan VN 1700. Today I'm going to put in a new set of speakers. I already replaced the factory speakers with a set of kickers. I'm not real happy with them. Um, so I'm going to try a set of uh, Polk audio instead. I'm going to go with a Polk DB521 series. The tools you're going to need for this are pretty simple. Um, ratchet. Uh, four millimeter Allen wrench. Uh, I prefer a screwdriver uh, bit for the end of it. And if you're not sure how to tell the positive from the negative, um, the voltmeter will come in handy. I'll show you how to uh, determine positive and negative just in case the speakers you buy are not uh, tagged properly. Okay, to change the speaker, there are two um, Allen heads right there, and inside there are four Phillips head screws. Let's start by removing the two screws. Hold the grill cover on. And the grill actually pulls out to the right a little bit or away from the screws. And there's a couple little pins up in the corner to hold the grill in place. To unscrew the speaker, simply unscrew the four screws. Um, mine is missing one. I dropped one in the fairing the first time I did this. So be careful not to drop the uh, screw tabs down the fairing. It's really easy to do. I'll show you when we get inside. They're just rubber tabs that hold it in place. Once you have your four screws out, the speaker will just simply pop out. Now I have pulled my fairing off and did some wiring back inside of the fairing to make it easier for me um, to add some more stuff to it. Let's pull the two speaker wires off. wiggle pull. You might have to get a screwdriver or your thumbnail to pop those off and the old speaker's out. If you want to check inside you can actually pull the housing out of there. Makes it easier. These little tabs right here are the ones I was saying. They're little rubber bushings that pop up in the bearing. If you're not careful this will drop right through that little hole. Never to be seen again. Probably fell out on the road somewhere one day. Um, so make sure when you pop those in or pop them out, you don't drop them down in the holes. In a later video, I'll show you how to get the fairing off and what I did up under the fairing. Uh, many of you have bought the MP3 player or some other accessories. A lot of them show you how to mount them inside of this box here. Basically, I'd rather have that glove box for my wallet or something else. Um, so what I did is I pulled the fairing off and I mounted everything up inside of the fairing. Um, zip tied it in place and then when I put the fairing back in didn't have to worry about it anymore I've also put a capacitor in line with the speaker wire um, to reduce some of the bass because these honestly sound terrible uh, you can't get a lot of bass out of a five and a quarter inch speaker and the bass that pushes out of the radio just distorts the speaker sounds terrible so I put an inline uh, capacitor that came in with the uh, kicker speakers I may have to take that out after I pop these in. Uh, we'll see. Basically, to put the new speaker in, we're going to reverse the process. We're going to drop in the cone, uh, put in the speaker. In your case, four screws. In my case, three screws. Uh, put the grill back on. We'll repeat this on the other side. We'll turn it on and see what it sounds like. The difference between the Polk audio and the kicker, um, obviously, look wise. Um, the Polk looks like it's a lot better speaker. I think the Polk actually has a 93 dB rating, 
which basically means at one watt, this speaker will push 93 watts, which is quite efficient. So they technically should sound a lot better than the kickers. One of my other YouTube videos shows you how to determine whether you've got a positive or negative connection. In this case, there's a red wire going to one side and a red and black wire going to the other side, which is pretty obvious which one's positive and negative. Sometimes you still can't tell the difference or if you just want to make sure. If you take a AA battery, um, one side's marked positive, one side's marked negative. Um, if you take the wires, if you touch the ends of the wires to the battery terminals, so put that one on the positive, this one on the negative. If you watch the cone, in this case the cone is pushing outward. That lets me know that this wire is the positive wire. If I flip the battery around, put the negative on this side and the positive on this side, the cone will actually suck down instead of pushing out. That tells me that it's backwards. So my positive wire is this wire right here. And in this case, it is actually on the bigger terminal side. So this is my positive, this is my negative. Okay, this is where your voltmeter comes in handy at. I'm gonna take the voltmeter, I'm gonna flip it over to 200 millivolts there. I'm gonna turn on the accessories. I'm actually gonna turn the radio on. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna check the two wires. So I'm gonna put the positive down this one and the negative on this one. If you look at the reading on there, I'm getting a minus 13, minus 14 fluctuation. That lets me know that my wires are backwards. If I put the positive in this side and the negative on this side, I'm now getting a positive number. That means that this wire is my positive, this wire is my negative. Okay, time for reassembly. Speaker wires through the little hole. I'll grab them and pull them up. And again, make sure you don't knock those little screw tabs down in your fairing or you will be uh, either tearing it apart or doing what I did and going with three and hoping that would hold and three actually hold it in quite well so there's no problems with the sound. Grab my new speaker since I know which is my positive and negative because we've already determined that. Put the wires on. Negative. Now in this case, this wire is not fitting as well as I'd like it to. So I'm going to go grab a pair of pliers and I'm going to snug it down a little bit without over tightening it because once you smash it, it's hard to get back out. I grabbed a pair of needle nose angled pliers here just because it's easier for me to get in there and squeeze it. Again, what I'm doing is I'm tightening up this wire terminal because I don't like the way it fits on there. So I'm just going to put a little gentle pressure on it and try to fit it. If it fits on there good, I'll leave it. If it doesn't, like in that case, a little bit more pressure, not a lot, until it's where I feel like it slides on there and it's not going to vibrate off, which is where I've got it at now. And since I'm here, I'm going to double check this one. Same thing. It's a little bit looser than I like. I'm going to just put a little pressure on it. And I do that towards the back of the connector, not the front of the connector. So if you do over tighten it as you're pushing the wire down, it'll still grab a hold of it. And I'm going to drop my speaker back in. Grab my screws. I'm going to tighten it up. I prefer to start all of them at the same time. And that way, if anything's off balance, I can uh, adjust it. And you'll notice when I do a lot of things, if I block the camera view, I apologize, but me personally, I put my hand between the screwdriver and anything that I can poke a hole in, especially a speaker. I would much rather jam a hole in my finger and let it heal than to run a hole through a brand new speaker. It's just my personal preference. You may value your fingers more than I do, but I've been stabbed enough times that it doesn't matter 
again that speaker to me especially if i'm trying to finish a job is more valuable than a little nick on my finger and again i'm hoping i don't have to pull that resistor out of there they sound fine with it if i do or it's actually a capacitor i will go in there we'll tear it back out and i'll try to get the uh, capacitor out without having to tear, tear the fairing off the speaker's in before I go any further. I'm just gonna turn it on, make sure it's got power. And we got power, so I'm gonna turn the key off. The grill's gonna go back on. Little tab goes in first, and then the two bolts that hold the grill in place. Same thing here, try to get them both started. Uh, you don't want to over tighten one and then have the other one either not line up properly or just crack it or break something. Again, this is plastic, it's not chrome, it's not real metal. So don't crank it. If you crank it down too tight, you're either just going to break the uh, plastic housing or you're going to strip something out. Snug them down a little bit and you can always go back and check them in a couple weeks to make sure. And that's how you put a speaker in. Okay, here's the other side in. I did fail to mention that on the subwoofer or on the speaker, the tweeter is adjustable. So you could turn it in or out so you can adjust the poke so it's straight up and down if you want. You can turn it in towards you more or out towards you more. I'm just going to leave it kind of forward facing for now. Don't think it's going to make a whole lot of difference on a motorcycle going down the road. Okay, I dug out the factory speakers. You can see by the magnet on the back with a Phillips head screw stuck to it. It's about the size of my thumb. Um, the cone itself is probably paper. Uh, sounds terrible. Uh, the kicker on the other hand, the magnet is a whole lot larger on it. I just didn't get much base out of that. Not that I'm expecting to get a lot of bass out of a five and a quarter inch speaker, but um, I did expect more from kicker. I've got kickers in my cars and uh, a couple Jeeps I own and much better speaker than what I've got here. Uh, the cone is really tough on this one. Um, and again, just not what I expected out of it. I'll have to check the rating on it. Again, this Polk audio is 93 decibels at one watt, which basically means it'll push 93 decibels uh, at one watt of speaker power, which is pretty good. Okay, speakers are in. Rotated the tweeter so they're facing the right direction. Um, we'll give it a shot, see what she sounds like. Uh, I've just got the regular radio playing. Uh, if you're streaming a device to it, like I've got a uh, Coolstream Duo hooked up underneath there. Once I stream something to it, digital always sounds better than regular radio. But just for initial sound, I can tell you right now that these pokes are twice as good as the uh, kickers. Uh, factory deck, uh, no amplifier, change a couple speakers out. Um, pretty inexpensive buy uh, to upgrade your sound. Uh, please like the video, uh, subscribe if you would. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on the 2018 Kawasaki Vulcan VN. Uh, I'll probably be tearing it uh, to pieces, uh, showing you how to get it back together. I've got the streaming device underneath for the radio. I'll be doing a video on that. I actually mounted that under the fairing, so there'll be a video on how to remove the fairing. And I'll show you the stuff that I mounted under the fairing. And I've also done a couple other things, like I put LED lights on it. But when I had the fairing on, I went ahead and mounted the switch up underneath. Um, so you wouldn't have a switch somewhere randomly or when the bike comes on, it comes on automatically. Almost everything I add on to a motorcycle, I try to do on a key on that way. If for some reason you do forget it, you don't come back out to a dead motorcycle. Thanks again for watching.